Another nice thing about the consumer and producer surplus measure is that they help explain something called the paradox of value, which is that prices don't seem to reflect their value to people for a lot of goods. Diamonds are really expensive and they're nice to have, but like you can live without them. Water, on the other hand, is like super essential to life and yet it's almost free. So what's going on here? The key here is that consumer surplus does not equal price, okay? If you want to measure the value of something to people, like the benefit they get from it, you need to measure consumer surplus, not price. So let's think about diamonds, for example. Uh, diamonds are really expensive to produce, all right? So let's say the supply curve looks like uh, this. All right, it's really steep. Uh, and the demand curve is relatively elastic. People don't, people like diamonds and if they were cheap, they would buy a lot, but they also can easily just stop buying diamonds if the price gets too high for them, okay? What is the outcome of this market? Well, we end up with a high price because the cost, marginal cost is very high. The quantity doesn't matter that much in this case and we have a relatively small consumer surplus, okay? So this is for diamonds. And we have a small consumer surplus because people's demand for this good is relatively elastic. Uh, they just don't care that much, okay? Conversely, let's think about water. All right, what's the demand and supply for water look like? Well, Demand for water is really inelastic. Uh, let's make it like this. You gotta have water uh, or you're dead. And if it's cheaper, you'll drink more, you'll use more, you'll take more baths, more showers, whatever. But at some point you don't need any more water. Meanwhile, let's assume that privately water is really cheap to provide, okay? We can discuss whether this reflects the true costs at a later date. What is the result? Well, we end up with a low price of water, but the consumer surplus is gigantic. It's really large. Okay, and that's because demand is really elastic. We fundamentally need it. Uh, if we had to pay our true willingness to pay for water, we would pay a lot more than we do, but because it's so cheap to make, we end up paying a very low price. And the point is that price equals marginal cost and it equals willingness to pay for the marginal transaction, okay? It's not the willingness to pay for every transaction, okay? So I would pay a fortune for a glass of water if it was the only way I could get any water. But by the time I have a lot of water, if somebody offered me a glass now, the amount that I would pay for it is basically zero. So the last transaction, the marginal one, is my willingness to pay, and that's close to zero. And marginal cost, again, if that's low, we find a point where the marginal cost is equal to willingness to pay. And the upshot of this is this is not the value of the product, okay? So this is the paradox of value. Uh, if you wanna know how valuable something is, you gotta look at the consumer surplus, not the price necessarily.